He's a three-time Olympian from the Games in Sydney, Australia, Athens, and Beijing. He is located in Calgary. He runs a small business, and he won Olympic gold. Let's say hello to Kyle Schufelt, a gold medalist, but also a small business owner. And Kyle, let's get the story. You run this fantastic business in Calgary that so depends on human contact Mm -hmm. And your love of gymnastics, can you fill everybody in on what's been happening over these last several weeks? Because I know it, it hasn't been easy. Yeah, it certainly hasn't been easy. I've been talking to a lot of small business owners across, across the country, and every gymnastic club that I know of is in the situation that we're in right now. We have uh, an 11,000 square foot space that was we built to... Um, teach kids gymnastics and to bring the community together and to be of service. And right now it is empty and it's, it's, it sucks. <laughs> that's, that's where we're at. It sucks, but it is what it is. And um, we are, we've had to make some really tough decisions over, over the past couple of weeks, decisions I never even could have imagined we would have had to make, but that's where we are right now. We um, we're basically at a pause, a standstill. Our space is empty, except when I come in and, play on the trampoline <laughs> well and that's why we're talking because i caught you i think on facebook bouncing around some apparatus and i thought well there's a guy who's got some spirit and i know with what you're going through uh, kyle let's face it cash flow is crucial for any small business and you've got payroll and you've got rent and then you had to do uh, the thing that nobody i don't care who you are in business nobody wants to have to tell people they don't have a place uh, to work at anymore. So can you kind of walk us through that a little bit in terms of, and maybe share some of your experiences for other people who are facing exactly the same thing? Yeah. So when all of this first kind of started brewing up, I, I think of it as a, a bit of a storm, you know, the clouds started to roll in. And at first we were, I think like many businesses in denial of the severity of it and like, the, the, the reality. And so we were doing everything we could to reassure our members that we were cleaning and we were washing our hands and we were getting our staff to wash their hands in between like every apparatus and we were bleaching and our knuckles were burning. And <laughs> slowly we started seeing our numbers dwindling and 50% of kids came to classes the week before March 15th. And we knew something was up, but we just wanted to continually reassure. I've always been the type of person who has like hope and optimism and I look like to the possibility in things. I'm like, okay, we're going to get ahead of this. We're going to be the cleanest gym. We're going to do all of these things that we can do to continue to stay open. But the second that the schools closed here in Alberta, it was Sunday, March 15th. Um, I knew there was going to be an announcement that evening. And during the day, I was calling all of my friends who are program directors or managers or business owners in, in gymnastics in the city, just trying to get in alignment. What are, what are you guys doing? What are you thinking? Because we were all like, no one had a roadmap. So we had to all collaborate and come together. And then at four o'clock, the announcement was that all of the schools were going to be closed. And there was a lot of pressure happening on Twitter and like, you know, in the press and like close the schools. Why are kids still going to go to the schools? So they closed them and that was the instant for us, instance for us where the, the flip, uh, the switch flipped and we had to put a crisis management plan into place very fast. I wrote a big long note to all of our members, reassuring them that we weren't gonna hold classes, that everyone was gonna get a credit for that week and that we were hopeful we could reopen for the spring camps the week after. We had no information, we didn't know. We were just trying our best to give people hope and same with our staff. But slowly things started to change. <laughs> well, not slowly, actually, very quickly. Um, it felt like we were driving down a highway at full speed with bowling balls dropping on our windshield. It was just the pace was changing so fast. And we were trying to be, well, we were being reactive as everybody was. And then on Friday, um, that would have been March 19th, I believe. I came into the office. I couldn't, I hadn't slept in a week because my mind was just turning. Like, how are we going to, how are we going to continue to operate our business with all of these changes and all these things happening? And what if we, what if we can't operate for the next three months? Like, what are we going to do? 
And on the Friday morning, I woke up and I just kind of had peace. And I said, you know what? We're going to figure it out and we're going to make it work. And we're going to, we cannot hold people in limbo. Our staff are curious what's going to happen. All of our members are starting to call wondering what's, what our plan is. And so that Friday morning, I just came in and I told my team, I said, we're putting a full stop. We are putting a full pause on things for right now. We're going to refund everybody back the money that they've given us for the next three months of programming because we don't know what's going to happen. And we do sessional based programming here. So we had taken full payments from people for three months worth of programming. And I decided we were going to have to lay off all of our hourly staff because we needed to think beyond when, when this gets better, how are we going to have enough runway to be able to reopen and to be able to deliver a great experience to people again, that, that experience that they, um, you know, have come to expect. And the only true answer was to put a, put a pause. <laughs> and the second I made that decision, I could see like the collective breath of fresh air from all of my team who were still here, our program director, our office manager, everyone was just like, ah, oh, we could relax. And then it was kind of like this gear. It was, we were over promising and under delivering. And the second we made that decision to under promise and then come back over delivering, um, we felt like we had some control again. So that's where we're at. We had to lay everybody off. We are in the process right now of processing um, three months worth of revenue in refunds. And we've um, been doing our best to create security blankets around us, um, applying for lines of credit, um, looking at our investments, looking at our um, investors, seeing if they could, you know, um, come come back into the game, things like that. So that that's where we're at. We're trying to create that roadmap, the new one. You know, Kyle, we're we're having these conversations. They're unedited, they're unscripted, they're unplugged, and I'm just listening to you here. I think for anyone you've told that story to, our our hearts go out. But yeah. you're like you might as well be like every small business across the country. So whoever is watching this right now. How do you help them understand how much of a burden anyone who owns a business is carrying right now? Because there's the, the, the burden you feel for people's families who are in your employ, but also there's this heavy moral, if you will, burden. So can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, there's, I am the type of person, I open this business to be of service um, to my community and to showcase the talents of my team. And there's a lot of people that rely on the income from this facility. And the way that I'm handling the burden right now is that I, much like when I was an athlete, you can only control so much. And right now, the only thing that I have control over is looking forward and giving people hope being as positive as I possibly can be, being there for people as a sounding board, giving them resources and tools, and also as a business owner, doing the right thing. Because we've gotten so many emails back from our members who are like, put a credit on our account, we want to come back, we don't want the refund, but we are giving them the refund because we're not providing them with the service. And that I think is gaining people's respect. Um, and it's making them feel like we are a business with integrity. And that, that, was, that was where the conflict was kind of, we were feeling the conflict was, where we were holding people in limbo. And we did have um, the, the revenue. We, you know, they had made the payments and we had those. And people were like, what if classes don't happen? And what if your business closes? And you're going to be holding our money ransom. And that wasn't our intention at all. We were like wanting to be able to start the session and just refund them back for that portion. But anyways, um, it's... I think for all business owners right now, the most important thing to do for the integrity of your business is to do the right thing and to um, honor refunds if you have the capacity and to make your, give your staff the resources so that they can easily apply for unemployment insurance so that they can easily apply for any of the government grants. We've made it, um, I've told all of my staff, if you're in a position where you need help, I want you to come to me first because I will do everything I can to help you. We found our team has really come together in these times. We've had some fun zoom calls. We've just been trying to stay connected. We have a Facebook chat group to try to keep everyone aligned because we have realized that it's us 
together as a unit that make this business strong. So we need to keep that for our staff as well, even though people are like currently unemployed, <laughs> just we care about each other more as people than we do as employees of this business. And so we're trying to be there for each other as well. You know, Kyle, I, I, I can't help but ask, it just hits me just listening to you now is that you competed in gymnastics at the Olympics, which was a very individual sport like golf or, or swimming. And these are very individual disciplines. And now this is such a, a team oriented discipline, if you will, that you're living. Is there anything from your Olympic training that you think that you're drawing on, that you're relying on, that you could share with folks who are also out there searching for answers they've never had to answer before? Yeah. Um, one thing that is very different in this situation is that because I am the owner of the business, a lot of people are looking to me for the answers, thinking that I I know what's happening. And quite frankly, I have no idea. And I'm just trying to figure it out. And I'm trying to make decisions based on my gut. And that's what I did as an athlete. Um, a great example in 2001, I was supposed to go to the world championships. And I just knew in my gut that that wasn't right for me at that point in time. I was feeling tired. I was burnt out. I had competed for 18 months straight. And so my gut was telling me, you can't go to this world. It's going to be dangerous. You're not going to be successful. You're, it, it will not be right. So I trusted my gut and I told my coach in the National Federation that I wasn't going to be participating at the World Championships. And I got a lot of flack for it. I got in a lot of trouble. But you know what it did? It allowed me the opportunity to rest, to regroup, and then to reset. And I came back and I was a stronger athlete than I had ever been. And it actually helped me propel myself towards winning an Olympic title in 2004. And so sometimes you just have to make those strong gut decisions as a business owner, um, much like you do when you're an athlete you know what's right for you. And, and an example of what is happening right now for us in, the, in this business is we're seeing a lot of gymnastic clubs, dance studios offering online programming. Um, we're not there. <laughs> we just aren't there. And I'm trusting my gut. It's, I, I, I'm trying right now to do crisis management. I'm trying to take care of the people that are around me. Um, my staff are number one. And so we haven't had the creative juices flowing yet to be able to create any online content to share with our membership. And that's okay. And I'm trusting my gut that that's okay, that our members are going to still be loyal to us because of the experience we created for them when they were here, when our doors were open. So there's one example. Another great example that I've been thinking a lot about is um, in 2004, heading into the Olympic Games, I was really feeling pressure and expectation uh, around the outcome. Um, a lot of the media there's that media that kind of builds up before the Olympics and are you going to win the Olympics? Are you, you have this chance you are ranked third in the world. Like the pressure is building, building, building about the outcome of it all. And my sports psychologist told me when I was feeling that, that pressure, he said, you know what? The only thing that you can control is your performance. It's not about the outcome. The outcome will come if you do the performance, but right now you need to just peel back the layers of the onion and focus on what you can control and that is your preparation, that's your attitude, that's the way that you, you prepare for this Olympic Games, and it's the way that you perform your routine on the day. You have no control over the outcome. You could come fifth place and do the best routine of your life. What you need to focus on right now is what does that best routine of your life look like? How is that gonna feel? When you stick your final landing, how are you gonna walk away knowing that the rest of it is up to the judges. And that was a really calming force in my preparation for the Olympic Games. Um, talking to every other uh, person that I know in my life that has won an Olympic gold medal, you're actually not focused on the outcome at all. You're focused on the daily task of getting yourself ready for that performance of your lifetime. So I'm trying to think of it in those terms. Like, this isn't about the outcome. This is about the daily performance, how I show up. Well, and this is so valuable, I think, for everyone to hear, Kyle, for not just business owners, but for anyone who's caught in any form of limbo. Control what you can control. I, I love what you said, but boy, you got to be trusting your gut and whatever the right, you know, and do the right thing. That never, ever, ever goes out of style, but it's even more important uh, now. And uh, focus on performance, not the outcome. Those are 
those are some real pearls, uh, Kyle, all the way from the Stampede City of Calgary. I had, to, by the way, I had I had to throw this picture up there because I know that was from the opening ceremonies of the '88 games in Calgary. And uh, you were telling me you were a six-year-old kid when you got the idea from those games you had to go to the Olympics. The Olympics are. Well, they're an inspiring thing and they can bring the world together and they can be used for really magical, powerful, good things. Uh, this has actually been really challenging. I know this time for a lot of athletes who were preparing for those Olympic games in Tokyo that were supposed to happen this summer. And I was supposed to be there as a, as a broadcaster. And so there again, another adjustment and you just have to go, <laughs> you got to roll with the punches. You, you have no control. And in this situation, What's most important is humanity and health. And I think that has really become clear and apparent is that you can freak out about your business, but at the end of the day, you got to do the right thing for um, humanity. And that's, that's a big reason why we, we close our doors um, and why so many people are, because there's something more important than, than any business right now. And that is the health of, of our fellow humans. <laughs> Very well said. Kyle, so appreciate you coming on and sharing uh, those thoughts on how small business moves forward and how we can actually uh, lead together uh, through these unpredictable times.